And at the outset, let me first thank the Department of Economics for inviting me for a for a timely kind of topic that actually I am going to describe, discuss something which you may know that I'm not going to say very new things to you. But at the same time, I wanted to focus plus on certain aspects of importance of studying economics. Maybe at, at at some point of our career or some point of our time that we may we would have thought that you know uh, this why what am i going to do with these subjects this economic subject or financial economics or whatever that you are actually in what kind of opportunities that i have other than that you know conventionally everyone knows that you know we can go as a as an assistant professor in one of the colleges or we can do further research and go and join as a research associate somewhere. Or some people will think about going and joining in Indian economic service or civil services or reserve bank. To that extent, we think and then we actually pursue our studies. So, but I thought like, you know, I will explain a little bit about the importance of the subject right now in the contemporary world, especially when you talk about this industry 4.0. Hope everyone knows that what is Industry 4.0. Let me first explain that. Uh, you know, the, the Industry 4.0, otherwise, it is popularly known as Fourth Industrial Revolution, which started about one and a half decades back, maybe after 2000s, 2005, and it started. Uh, we had already three kinds of three types of industrial revolutions earlier in the recorded history. Like, first one was actually, it was kind of a revolution in agriculture implements or agro-technology and all which happened in 1700s. A lot of inventions happened and it changed the production and productivity of agriculture sector of the world. And you know about this feudalism concept originated and all kinds of theories centered around such kind of developments. Then after, in 1800s, so industry per se, that industrial sector itself, that industrial revolution happened, like steam engine invented, electricity, invented and you know various other things like telecommunication revolution happened so many many such kind of technologies originated during industry 2.0 it happened like you know somewhere uh, in 1800s and then you know the third industrial revolution come very off late something in 1960s or mid 1960s which is primarily driven by one particular technology the technology is actually internet, internet technology. So because of that, the whole world or whole industry actually got changed. Production changed, productivity changed. So the theories, economic theories also got changed. Till that time, we were thinking only about four factors of production, land, labor, capital, organization. Everyone keep on saying about these four factors of production. We never thought about this improvement of productivity. So till that time, everyone assumed that you know, productivity is constant. And it is actually externally defined and things like that. So after that, maybe uh, you know, post Keynesian or like you know, post classical kind of analysis. If you look at, especially after 1960s, you can see that the changes incorporated in economic theories also. So that changed the world. The change the opportunities. Internet completely transformed the entire world. That you all know. You are all experienced. Now. Like about one and a half decades back, again change is happening in the industrial sector, industrial revolution, fourth industrial revolution, which is popularly known as Industry 4.0. There, you know, we are talking about the technologies like you know artificial intelligence, data analytics, quantum computing, uh, Internet of Things, space space technology, uh, robotics. So such kind of technology has come in large way into the economies of the world, or which actually largely transformed industrial structure and production productivity everything so it is it is going on like it is not completed it is going on right now you are in that era so here one major difference is happening here in this era that is actually co-influence of various technologies so co-influence of various technologies are happening in particularly in industry 4.0 therefore you have to plan as students of economics we all have to plan our career according to the changing requirements of this industrial world or industry 4.0. That is what the, 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 the theory or the thesis I wanted to put it forward in this lecture. 
okay so it's actually uh, you know the mix of technologies when mix of technologies happens if you take any technology like artificial intelligence or data analytics or quantum computing or robotics or space technology or anything you take you can see that it is the co-influence of various technologies or that is leading to the co-influence of various subjects so that is why in this era interdisciplinary approach of subjects is very very necessary so you have to focus on such areas when you do your project or when you do your your internships or such kind of things if at all you are not doing internship i urge you that in this pg program you try to do your own internship somewhere and then that will actually get maximum exposure about what is happening in the economy and you can use your economic knowledge for solving the problems of the country or some society or something so that you keep it in mind so um, what is a career everyone actually uh, talk about career everyone actually talk about job is there any difference between career or job or like you know why do we need a career planning when we study what kind of career that we can have when we learn economics so what is a career what is a career so it's actually career is something like you know a career includes all the roles it is not only a job it includes all jobs you undertake throughout your life education training paid and unpaid work your family volunteer work leisure activities everything and more so then only you can say it is a career so every time or like you know people talk about career and they tend to think that career is equal to job there is a whole lot of difference between job and a career job is anything that you do it for money that is job career is not like that career that you have to passionate about career you need a lifelong objective like you have to look for future you have to you have to combine everything like you know your work your family your leisure activities your your passion everything has to come get combined then only you can say that you are actually into a good career so you have to plan for the career then so that is why people say you need a planning for a career so career is often composed of jobs held titles earned work accomplished over a long period of time rather than just referring to one position rather than just referring to one position so that is a career so career you have to keep it in mind so for that career needs planning therefore be careful when you choose a career you have to make your career you have to change your 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 passion actually or you have to you have to combine your passion and leisure everything with your job you have to look for futuristic thing so don't ever look for just getting a job somewhere and i am satisfied so you have to build a career for that building a career you needs to actually understand about how the world is actually uh, you know moving how do we plan our career so for planning our career these are the various things actually you need to know first of all you have to aware about various career options when you learn economics p post graduate course what kind of options are there in front of you in india or in the world or in your state or wherever you want so how you can actually combine your personal skills or your personal passion with the career or with the job so those things you have to be aware about it is not only about the job that you are going to take maybe you are aware about your job your uh, your perks your your salary everything you know but various other things you need to know how it is helping your family if at all you are interested in family or otherwise how is helping your passion to pursue so such kind of things also you keep it in mind when you plan your career awareness about necessary skills for the career that is another thing so what kind of skills that you have in you what other kinds of skills that you need to improve upon so such kind of awareness you need to have then only actually you can go into a good career awareness about ourselves you have to know about yourself so what is that that means you have to know about your strengths and weaknesses every one of us has to be aware about our strengths and our weaknesses many a time what happens is we may fail to understand our strengths and weaknesses some students may know about their strengths 
but they fail to understand about their weaknesses so if you understand if you try to understand about you and your weaknesses and strengths then only actually you can build a good career because certain weaknesses like you know you may be a uh, you know person actually wanted to sleep till 10 o'clock in the morning that is there, there is no harm in that but then when you choose a career you have to choose accordingly otherwise you have to compromise many things so that will that may affect your entire life okay so that is what i said that may be a, actually a weakness so that that kind of weakness or like you know you may be a very short tempered person so yeah when you choose a career so you have to plan your career accordingly so in which position that i can be so it is not in this world in olden days when we were studying teachers will tell us that you just adjust your life according to the requirements of the world or the career or the job but now everything is changing so now that we can get the career which is actually what adjusting our lifestyle our passion our leisure so such kind of transformation is happening especially during this industry 4.0 time so that means career options are huge tremendous you can get lots of career so only problem is many people are not aware about these careers awareness about time is another important factor when you plan your career time is fly time will fly away so it won't wait for anyone so time factor is very very important so plan your time accordingly plan your career according to the availability of the time awareness about the risks and returns what are the risks that you are going to take when you plan this career what kind of returns you are going to get returns when i say it is not only monetary returns non monetary returns also when you are in a career what kind of monetary returns along with that what kind of non monetary returns you are going to get some people are very much interested to get non monetary returns in the sense that fame or in the sense that you know position so some people are now about that such things so they may not be worry about what kind of monetary benefits they have so such different kind of people are there among us so therefore we have to be aware about this risk and returns then we have to plan our career that is what actually we should do when we plan about our career so in short we can say that when we plan our career we need experiences we need to actually look about our interests our goals our skills our education our values in life these are all have to have kind of like you know merge then only you can plan about a good career that is a good career so a dream career is actually what always matches with your passion with your skills with your lifestyle then we can call it as a passion i mean a good career or the career that it is very very uh, it is it will give at most satisfaction to a person so factors for choosing a career passion i already said so you have to have the passion towards a particular career so you keep in mind that you know this is what i wanted to be so therefore you dream about that and you just 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 try to achieve that so dream career is the job that matches up perfectly with your interests that is what dream career means so skills so choosing a career that matches your skill set might seem like common sense without the necessary skills you will likely struggle and fail to produce so the career has to match with your skills or in this area what you can do is you can match the skills with your career also so you can upgrade your skills certain skills like you know the hard skills you can always upgrade but soft skills many a time you gain soft skills by the age and therefore you cannot actually change your soft skills pretty much but still you can change some of them. so hard skill always actually you can change and you can actually fine tune to the requirements of your dream career okay and then lifestyle and personality so career has to i told you already this career has to match with the lifestyle and personality your personality you are a different kind of person every one of us are different so please don't compare ourselves with other person so other person may be looking for some kind of career because he or she may be thinking that this career suits his personality or her personality and that actually give his or her him or her maximum satisfaction so that is why i said to so say lifestyle and personality is very very important for choosing a career enough challenges to grow a career has to give you challenges 
lot of challenges if in a career if you don't have enough challenges you won't enjoy the career you need challenges every time any career you may think that certain career is not having challenges like teaching career. people may generally think that there is no challenge but you have to make challenges challenges are there huge challenges are there in different kind of challenges are there if you have more challenges then you will enjoy if you are a person that enjoys actually what uh, solving these challenges or meeting challenges then definitely you will enjoy your career so challenges have to be there for to you to grow in in in, in your career brings you satisfaction ultimately the career has to give you satisfaction happiness you will feel like you know i'm satisfied i'm i'm doing it for myself i'm doing it for like you know my satisfaction so i have done something like you know at most with at most satisfaction so that is actually the most important thing that you have to look for when you choose a career okay then employability employability is very very important especially in this industry 4.0 so you may be getting uh, you know pg degree ma in economics or ma in financial economics and all but that itself actually won't assure you to get or to access some kind of good career in this world so you need the employability skills employability skills are the skills that matches with the existing kind of jobs the or career that is developing in the world so that you have to match you have to be aware about such things so you are employability skills you have to you have to improve so definitely one of the factors of employability is your your qualification your qualification is very very important qualification is not only in quantity terms but also in very very quality terms so it is not about that you are getting a pg degree even if you are not getting higher marks or something but if you have the quality of understanding about the concept that you learned in your pg degree definitely that will be useful for you to 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 build a good career additional supporting hard skills that i will tell you what are the skills that you might require for yes, getting it just like qualification additional supporting hard skills that i will tell you what are the hard skills hard skills primarily this qualifications only soft skills you, you might need lot of soft skills for getting into a good career outlook and attitude attitude towards job and life that is another important thing i will explain you what it is personality is very important personality is not the appearance but personality is something different planning and resource mobilization is very important how to plan your resources for your for getting your career you might need to get some kind of access some kind of skills so how much that you can spend what kind of like you know planning that you 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 might require for such kind of resource mobilization the right method and strategies you have to impose right kind of method right kind of strategies methods and strategies are entirely different so you have to approach you have to do uh, such right kind of methods and strategy for your for building a career i i told you already about time management so now i moved the slide i think hope you can see qualification that is a slide right now so there are qualifications like you know you know i don't have to tell these things ba bsc economics post graduate qualifications are there doctoral post doctoral research with good output that also is a good qualification so then you can actually you can use this qualification you can make it and then aspire for good career so industry 4.0 or in economics this is what i said new technology revolution and the scope of economics now the scope of economics if you look at i am not telling that because i am actually in the, in the economics area but you just ask anyone i am in a different institute right now i am in indian institute of space science and technology you may be wondering how an economic person survive there in a technology institute like indian institute of space science and technology that is what i said we may be having lot of kind of like you know weird idea about different opportunities Well, I'll tell you what is this institute all about and how, what kind of work that we can do in here. So, new technology revolution actually giving a huge scope for economics. When the subjects co-influences, when technology co-influences, everyone is thinking about how you can reduce costs, how you can make maximum profit, quality, how you can improve, how you can actually improve the productivity of the economy. so all these things are happening definitely everyone wants to know about actually what what is what is 
what is actually the role of or what kind of role that uh, you know uh, it can play economics can play in the industry 4.0 so economics actually is a very very important subject the key subject everyone says that it is the key subject right now uh, in this in this fourth industrial revolution technology area but it is not the simple normal economics that we learn but we have to upgrade our skills according to the requirements of the, the emerging uh, you know the technology so uh, we need to actually approach our subject in a much interdisciplinary way or transdisciplinary way so what is interdisciplinary what is the difference between interdisciplinarity and transdisciplinarity interdisciplinarity means actually our discipline economics is quite, uh, you know like mixing with other uh, discipline and then you know developing a new discipline that is what it is known as actually what interdisciplinary or you are actually in the realm of economics only but you are taking some methods or like some concepts from other uh, other subjects like science subjects or like you know other humanity subjects and all and then actually you are actually working on solving some problems of the economy so that is interdisciplinary approach transdisciplinary means you can even migrate from your own subject and can be using other methodologies of other subjects. You are basically an economics person. But when you move from that subjects, not completely, but your methods and all you are using, but the basic methods or the law or the focus is going to be the subject that you are moving in. So then it will become transdisciplinary. So you are moving into. So a lot of interdisciplinarity and transdisciplinarity is happening right now, right now in the world, or right now in this industry 4.0. So this I told you in the beginning itself. This is because you know the co-influence of technologies are happening. So that is why this interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary. If you are not an interdisciplinary person, if you cannot actually survive in the world. At the same time, you need to know very, very, very good about, or you have to have proper understanding about your subject also. Okay, then only you can survive. So interdisciplinarity is very, very important. So. I will tell you an example. Say, for example, in our PG codes, we are learning uh, various subjects. Like, you know, we may learn about econometrics. We le learn microeconomics. We learn macroeconomics. We learn international trade. We learn actually finance or like, you know, uh, economic systems. Maybe we learn economic thought. These are all we are actually parallelly learning. But most of the time, the problem happens is we never know that how we can use all these subjects together i'm not talking about interdisciplinarity i'm talking about in inside the subjects itself interdisciplinarity is also not happening right now say for example the indian economy subject is there for making into happen like this like you know mixing of all these areas but we never do like that we just parallelly learn indian economy also so that is why many a time the skills required for this industry 4.0 we could not actually want make it so that that has led to actually uh, you know that that will be leading to the displacement of certain uh, certain places of jobs for the economics graduates so you keep that in mind so we need actually to solve the economic problems by using all these kinds of subjects of our our subject itself and what i am talking about is interdisciplinarity so right now this intradisciplinarity is also not there but i'm talking about interdisciplinarity but we have to we have to do some interdisciplinary work if you you, you just to you look at the nobel prizes awarding these days like last 10 years or 15 years you take which area that the nobel prizes are awarding almost all nobel prizes are going into this interdisciplinary approach of economics so that means then only the subjects subject will grow so so you also have to actually learn how to move to such areas so for that you need to know uh, your subject very very clearly then only you can do this interdisciplinary approach so in this industry 4.0 these are the catchwords here it is not quality not quantity we talk about quality only not quantity you need not get a first rank or you need not get a like you know 90 percent mark in your in your pg but if you are very if you have if you are because of your pg if you have good quality 
good quality in the sense that conceptual understanding and about your know, theoretical understanding everything that if you have in depth definitely that will take you a long way so quality is important not the quantity suitability is important not the survival so job is for survival but career is for you to become suitable to the the economy the industry 4.0 as well as your your passion your your interest and all so suitability is very very important not survivability don't think about just survive always we have this traditional mindset that you know i just wanted to get some job and survive in the in the world i just wanted to buy my food and survive in the world don't think like that it is actually suitability is the catch word optimization is the catch word not maximization you don't have to try to maximize your things you don't have to go everywhere and then you, are, you don't have to study all kinds of subjects and all but optimization is very important means how well that you are using the things that you know how well that you would be able to articulate the the, the 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 concepts that you are learning so that is optimization smart work is the order of the day not hard work people are talking about smart work it is not the time of hard work you don't have to be very very hard about your work if you do smart work you will enjoy your work you can build a good career so that these are the things that people talk about uh, you know economics when you talk about industry 4.0 okay now interdisciplinary studies in economics there are more scope for interdisciplinary studies that i already told you you would have heard this some of these at least some of these areas see first i put it like you know space economics i am very much interested in this first two space economics and neuroeconomics you may wonder what it is like you know uh, no much people are doing in this area space economics but internationally people do in space economics neuroeconomics space economics is not the economic analysis of space or the in economic analysis of or the cost benefit analysis of space or it is not only that space economics is something else like you need to understand various other things what kind of economic activities are generating because of this technology what kind of forward linkages and backward linkages are happening because of this space technology so this how this is actually benefiting changing the life of the people how space technology is improving the productivity of industries how space technology is enhancing the welfare of the people how space technology is actually giving solutions to the to the health problems of the community so many many areas so many umpteen areas are there so this is actually space technologies in the science or physics or such kind of area and then economics is coming there and then you are actually doing so such kind of you know when you deal with such kind of subjects you will feel very happy and then you can see that lot of problems are solved so that is space economics so i said one kind of interdisciplinary subject next is neuroeconomics i don't know that also one of the i think i'm uh, one of the students of Carrieta Gamas, like a couple of years back, two three years back, she has gone. She came here and she has gone to, gone to UK for studying this neuroeconomics. She is doing PhD in neuroeconomics right now. So neuroeconomics is another area. So neuroeconomics is a huge area. It's a part of behavioral economics, but neuroeconomics is very much needed for the companies right now. So when they introduce a product, which time they wanted to introduce, what kind of products that you like, what kind of purchasing pattern that you have. these are all you are studying in neuroeconomics so especially in space economics also neuroeconomics is very very important because when you are in zero gravity situations your thinking level is different you may think differently because your your brain is floating your heart is floating in zero gravity so when the brain floats so the all the glands attached to the brain is actually floating so the production of various you know the uh, various uh, uh, you know juices like you know i uh, you know at uh, the you know this uh, pituitary gland produces some juice or like you know adrenaline produces something like you know these kind of uh, you know uh, juices when they produce so that is affecting the decision of a person so it you know, the studies shows that when you are in zero gravity situations you are thinking your economic thinking is different so that is very very important for a space mission so such kind of if you are very much interested in science also so you can go for neuroeconomics so you can when you are when you when you go to some shop they may play some kind of music 
why they are playing some kind of music in some kind of shops what is the reason behind that there is a particular reason behind that why certain mobile companies are introducing certain kind of mobile phones in a particular time period it is not only that in a festive season or anything but they study neuroeconomic analysis why is stock market how this neuroeconomics is affecting stock market this is another important area so these are all huge areas there for studying about neuroeconomics and you can take blood samples and analyze all your i think you can take the eeg or various brain mapping and then you can actually analyze it, your decisions how it is influences the economic thinking and all so this is neuroeconomics so economics economics and physics is combined economics is a chemical economics is there mathematical economics agricultural economics you know very well ecological economics biological economics planetary economics engineering economics health economics medical economics behavioral economics like that huge areas of interdisciplinary opportunities are there when you have when you are ready to do this interdisciplinary approach your scope your career prospects will be much more so that you keep it in mind so such a wonderful subject which can find a connection in any subject you talk about biology you talk about history you talk about english literature you talk about malayalam literature you can connect economics with that there are a lot of studies are happening so interdisciplinarity this is the one subject that you can connect to any subjects in the world if you are really interested so you can do a lot of things in such area so that you keep it in mind how to upgrade your skills for upgrading your skills the important point is understand the language of economics this is the part we miss most of the time we are studying economics but we never understand the language of economics what is the language of economics language of economics means you should be able to think in the way of economics you should be able to interpret the economic ideas so that is language of economics so economics when you learn in english language only then you can't use economics for problem solving you need to learn economics in economics language then only you can use it for solving the problems your skills that is important skill this is a skill that you need to learn you start thinking about you just take the case of a problem like you know sri lankan problem and how it is affecting india so people tell many things newspaper tells many things but how you can use an economic theory for interpreting this problem so you just try that you yourself can try or like you know russia is attacking or ukraine and then how it is affecting indian economy so just you just try and then interpret or various things that you just try and interpret then you know your skills will get up no one can teach this to you but it is actually the skill that you have to learn you have to learn yourself interpret and learn learn the art of analyzing and interpreting economics in verbal and written form this is another skill that you have to learn many a time you won't learn this thing because in the classrooms no one can teach you such kind of skills learn the art of analyzing and interpreting economics when i say analyzing and interpreting it is not only that the data that you are analyzing and interpreting but also you have to analyze how you know you have to connect that data to the situation and the situations to the to the pre situation and post situations and the situation to the situation of other kinds of people situation or other country situation so all these are the art of analyzing and interpreting economics so verbal and written form this is the one of the skills that you have to gain learn every concept theory model with real situation apply it to indian economy everything when you learn islm model what kind of relevance is there for indian economy right now say for example rbi reserve bank of india is struggling it's actually they are not they are not actually ready to say that there is a kind of situation emerging like you know that liquidity trap situation or so so why they are actually thinking so why is there any fiscal space for the reserve bank of india to further go for relaxations and things so these kind of things that you apply and then all theories have applications and therefore you connect it you you can do it to your own you can do it your own apply it to indian economy then your learning will be much more and then that can be use, useful for various exams and various careers that you are looking for so every interview in a higher level when you go they will be actually looking these kind of skills whether you have or not okay and then necessity to interconnected learning in various subjects of economics that's what i said earlier interconnected learning like international economics and macro economics you are learning so when you you if you want to learn international economics or development economics or indian economy or anything you have to have a very very good base of micro and macro economics 
but that we we never understand that so if you don't have a proper understanding of macroeconomics you never understand what is international trade or what is international uh, you know uh, uh, finance at all so that you keep it in mind so interconnected learning is very very necessary for upgrading your skills research skills are another important thing research skill is not like collecting data or like you know uh, analyzing in some software or something but research skill is something much more how to create a research problem how to interpret a research problem what are the how you can actually uh, develop uh, hypotheses how you can actually develop objectives of a problem so these are all the skills that you need to learn nowadays you don't need to actually learn about how to collect data or how to do uh, cross tables or something because these are all doing by software so you can ask some agency to collect data also but you need to know about how to you know create those things how to interpret those so those things actually you need to know that are, that is the research skills additional skills that what that you need to gain is one is definitely software skills if you are learning if you are not learning right now please start learning one of these softwares i would actually suggest you to if you are really interested a little bit of mathematics then you go for python software this is actually the software gold over that they are using if you are thinking about going abroad for your phd or if you are thinking about doing some kind of international publication and all python is a good software because it gives you lot of kind of analysis it is all these uh, other softwares are very very good if you use there are spss tata matlab all the softwares matlab you need not go because it's more if you are really really interested in more mathematics you can go for matlab but it is very very useful for economic analysis r is actually an open source software so it's actually programming based so that also you can you can learn so you go for a programming software skill like you know c or c++ you can learn or coding if you can learn coding then it will be good for economics analysis so those who are actually excelling well and going abroad and doing in working in a you know world bank imf and all they really do this kind of programming skills and coding and then they learn python or such a if use or such softwares and then they try to analyze whatever software learn if you don't have interpretation skills it is not useful it is just a software software will not give anything you have to understand you have to have the research skills and interpretation skills then only you can effectively use this softwares for interpretations okay so this additional skill you learn then you have to learn this abstraction skill and analytical skills so you need to uh, abstract so from a from a from a situation so you need to know how to abstract certain things and then uh, interpret it then uh, similarly analytical skills how we can analyze certain situations so you can practice it by using a data set or something you take and interpret and then do this analytical skills so in that way you can explain you can you can this is a skill these are the skills that nobody is going to teach you in your academics nobody have the time and there is no nothing there in the syllabus also this things that is why the project is there that is why the internships are there so you need to gain that skills by, by thinking this in mind that this project is there for gaining some skills so you need to understand that so just like don't do like you know copying from somewhere and producing it you may get the marks everybody everybody will give you the marks but you just think that it is for making me to gain some kind of skills so therefore i have to do properly so abstraction skills analytical skills organizing interpreting and presenting quantitative and qualitative data so this skills you have to get it from your pg codes so then you you can actually you can this is a supporting skill that you can gain when you come out of your pg definitely you will have this kind of skills formulating problems and constructing solutions problems problems and research problems are different so all problems you cannot research so therefore how do you formulate a research problem that you need to understand constructing solutions by using various accepted methods so you have to construct solutions that you need for that you need to have a research design how you make a research design so these things actually it is don't wait for to do a research for this thing i am not saying these are the things only for research even if you are not doing research you need to have these skills for getting a good job if you are aiming only a government job or something you know you don't have to go for this but i am i'm very sure that you are not because those kind of sources are very less right now it is not there much so therefore definitely you try to give because this is the time that you will get enough time so you can gain this kind of skills along with your studies so please do that strategic thinking another important quality that you need to have communication of economic ideas 
you, you, you should be able to communicate economic ideas in economic language. So that is the, that is a very important. So if you don't know that, then nobody will accept you. So you, you should be able to explain economic ideas in economic language. Then you know you, you will get acceptance. So that you keep it in mind. So importance of practice. So practice is very, very important. So you just practice is no one get these skills from somewhere. So you have to gain these skills of your own. You just put effort on this. Definitely you can build a good career. So soft skills, uh, you know, these soft skills like, you know, soft skills of associated with emotional intelligence quotient, like communication, social graces, personality traits, language, personal habits, interpersonal skills, managing people, leadership qualities, Empathy, negotiation skills is one of the important skills that you need in economics career, public speaking, relationship building, leadership, time management. So this is these soft skills are very important. So these are the qualities that for marketing yourself in this industry 4.0. So you need to market yourself. You just have to say to the companies and the world that, you know, I, they, hey, I have these kind of skills. So uh, and, you know, or that you have to, you, if you are thinking about starting a startup. So definitely you have all these skills to negotiate, to, to, to do good business in this industry 4.0. So you need all these skills for your existence. So what is personality? So personality is the one thing that you need. So these three words are personality in my opinion. I won't buy the opinion of other people. This is my opinion. Personality is outlook you visualize. What kind of outlook you have? Various problems, not only about your outlook, your own personal career outlook, but also about various issues of the world, various issues of the country. So outlook that you visualize. Attitude you express. What kind of attitude you express? Because a person actually judge you based on your attitude. When you talk to someone, they uh, that person is going to judge you based on your attitude. The kind of attitude that you express with your, 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 your fellow beings or your, in, your, in an interview. So these are all actually the person attitude. Aptitude you possess. What you possess in you, like skills, qualifications, quality, not quantity, aptitude. That is aptitude. So outlook you visualize, attitude you express, and aptitude you possess. This is actually personality. This is actually the content of personality. If anybody wants to judge your personality, they may be looking these three things. Your outlook, your attitude, and your aptitude. That's all. For that, for understanding that, they may be asking many, many questions for understanding these three traits. So outlook, attitude, and aptitude. This is personality in this industry 4.0. So importance of personality. Personality is actually attitude. Personality is actually knowledge. Personality is actually your communication. Personality is your managing skills and also your appearance. Appearance matters, but it is not, don't give over our importance to that. But actually speaking, generally, People will get you based on your attitude. So your attitude use the personality. So keep that in mind for getting into success in your life, success in your career. So attitude is very, very important. Attitude, knowledge, communication, managing skills and appearance. So time management, I'm not going into the details of time management. You know, I don't have to tell you. In economics, we call it as time is capital. Time is money. Time is a factor of production. Okay, so time is so important. So think that you know time is capital. See, you are sitting in front of me uh, for the for the last uh, maybe almost uh, 40, 45 minutes. So that time has flown away. So it will not come to you. So that thing, think about that. When you spend time for something, when you spend time for your leisure, you need to have leisure. So then time, every time, time is money, time is capital, and time is a factor of production. The secret of success in the globalized world is the technique to know how to manage time. So many a time, uh, people fail to get in good career is because of they don't know how to manage time. So if you know how to manage time, time is equal for everyone. So it is all about managing the time. So how you are going to manage your time? For time management is not only about time, it is about your personality, it is about your family conditions, it is about your type of, you know, academics that you are doing, it is about your type of leisure that you wanted to have, it is about your type of engagements that you wanted to have. So all this depends upon your time management. So you have to manage, so you cannot compromise either of those. So you have to manage very wisely. So that is very important. So now let, let me tell you something about this research studies in economics, various areas and now you know in Kerala where various departments, 
Center for Development Studies is there, OSAD is there, specialized institutions like IAST that I am from, CMFRA is there, Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute, Foundation Research Institute is there, Corporate Development or Agricultural Universities, various colleges and different universities. If you are looking for a search career, national you have various schools, various institute universities like this, Delhi School of Economics, Delhi University, JNU, IITs. IITs like a very very important area in the economics they do a, a lot uh, IAMs also Kolkata University, Punjab, Gokhale Institute, Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Madras School of Economics, Hyderabad Central University, Ashoka University, Jadhapur University, Jain, Christ Universities like these are all premier universities which is having higher ranks that's why I put these numbers names University of Gujarat, Asim Premji, Symbiosis University, Northeastern Hill University Pondicherry University, Gandhi Rural uh, Gram Institute, Tamil Nadu, ISR, IAMs, University of Mumbai, IGADR. So all these institutions you can look for in India. So for your for your research studies, please look at the type of course and profile of the faculty before you join the courses of any of these universities. Or like you know, if you are joining research, so you look at the profile of the faculty, you look at the profile of the institute, you look at the history that you know what kind of uh, work that they are doing then you know you can get into good universities so specialized institutions also we have in india like indian agriculture research institute for economic students uh, indian institute of foreign trade indian statistical institute institute of social and economic change national council for applied economic research institute of economic growth national institute of public finance and policy national institute of rural development institute of capital markets in mumbai Center for Economics and Social Studies, Center for Monitoring Indian Economy, so Center for Public Policy Research, Institute for Financial Management Research, National Center for Agricultural Economics Policy Research, Association of Indian Economic Studies, so like that, Indian Society of Ecological Economics, Indian Society of Labor Economics, Reserve Bank of India, Nidhi IO, etc. So many, many, I just, I just run these institution names because at least someone of you that you know you are not about not heard about some of the institutes just just for like you know giving some kind of hint that's why i read all this so you can look for research career in all these kind of institutions academic career in economics you can have teaching school level university level that i don't have to tell you everyone knows that we have the central universities 54 central universities are there in india 23 iits are there 31 nits you know in iits even now this post of uh, you know, this, this assistant professor, associate professor, professors are still vacant. They are not getting, you know, right kind of people in IITs. So it is standing advertisement. You can you can apply any time if you have qualities like PhD and good publications and all. So NITs also you have this economics departments. Deemed universities are there. Specialized institutions, like I said earlier, you can have teaching positions. 361 private universities are there. There are certain very, very best private universities are there, like Symbiosis or like Nirma or Christ University and Ashoka or Vivaya and the Global. These kind of private universities, you can look for teaching opportunities. Research, again, doctoral and doctoral, I, I said some, some research institutions. Yeah, you can have, this is a type of research. You can have doctoral research, postdoctoral assignments. And you can have internship at various national institutions. This is a one area our, our Kerala students are not pursuing this internship opportunities. Please go to uh, go and look at this World Bank, IMF, and such kind of agencies. They always actually call for internships for PG students. So just if you get on this internship, you apply seriously for like you know one month internship, two months internship, and all. If you get that exposure, you will get a lot of connections with various people, and later on you can join there for. Uh, for jobs or like for working and all, for, for research and all kinds of things. So internship you have to look. Uh, usually economic students are failing to do such kind of, particularly students from, from Kerala. But other students like in other universities, uh, you know, I get internship uh, students also. So Kerala students somehow they are not interested to internships. So internships, it will give you a lot of exposure. So please try that in your PG period. Research officer post, uh, policy research, market research, private research centers, 
uh, there are various uh, agencies like Moody, Standard & Poor, such kind of agencies you can go and do research. So the search opportunities are there. Central government jobs like in, uh, in Indian Economic Service. So maybe someone is from Indian Economic Service is going to come and interact with you. So I'm not going to discuss all those like, you know, how you need to prepare. And this is another very, very prestigious job that you can get it when you have, when you are good in economics like you know you are actually going to be a policy maker if you get to you know indian economic service civil services examination very very you know like highly likely that economic students can get into civil services examination then army officers examination is there so you can look because these are the areas that i'm telling directly that you can use your economic skills for 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 you know, uh, for gaining your career. So that is what I'm, I'm, I'm particularly choosing this. You can go for any other like, you know, clerk or such kind of areas also, but I'm, I'm talking only about good career that how you can build. RB officers or such kind of areas that you can go. So economic advisors and planners. So you can go various banks, lot of vacancies like those who are PhD, their advisors, advisors are there in, in banks. Officers at SEBI, NS Associates, so Officers at NSC, BSC, Commodity Trading, CCI. So these agencies you can you know, get into jobs. So think about those areas also. Economic advisors like insurance companies, private and public companies, regulatory officers in TRA, IERC, ARC, board members of public sector companies, IOC, railways, NHAI. So if, if you are really, really good, so you can get government advisors, need the IO, planning boards, you can get into like as officers, members. So if you are very, very good in your subjects. So specialist officers, academic journals, see this economic reporting is very, very important, especially those who are doing financial economics. It's an, one of the biggest area that is opening up that is actually, you know, uh, uh, economic journalism. So uh, all these uh, big uh, international news agencies need this, you know, good interpreters, economic interpreters. So they pay you very, very heavily also. So, so if you have necessary skills, so you can look for that. Economists in companies, banks, government sector, etc. Mutual funds and investment funds agencies. Software companies like SPSS, SACS, Cata, Madlab, they appoint economists for their various activities. So you can look that. State level, definitely you know that I don't have to tell you various various things. And specialist areas like you know agriculture scientist research board, agriculture research service is there. Those who are good in agriculture economics, so you can get uh, this job or career. You can you can make a career in ASRB. I wanted to stick a little bit about this international area. How to start? So most of the time, our our students won't try this international academics because primarily they'll think that they are not actually qualified or they are not. Are very competent with other students to, to go abroad and do things. So this, this attitude that we have to take out from our mind. Everyone can go. You don't need much money to go abroad and study and all. There are a lot of various you know options are available to get you know uh, scholarships and grants by using. If you are really really good, you can get full scholarship and you can go there and pursue and career and all. So you don't need much money. You don't even a single penny, I would say, in certain cases for pursuing career. So how to start? First, you know, you list out the important universities. You just start, you just locate universities. How do you list out universities? There are various criteria is there for listing out various universities, right? Based on courses and faculty, based on what kind of course you want to go, and also what who are this the good faculty in those areas you just you can go and search in for bus or such kind of international agencies they give you a ranking and all so based on courses and faculty and based on ranking of institutions you can you can you can shortlist certain list of universities based on scholarship opportunities then you look for scholarship opportunities various universities foreign universities will give you scholarships so whether the scholarship is available or not, what kind of prepared uh, preparedness that I need to make for getting a scholarship. So such things that you just uh, uh, find out. Then based on part-time employment, you can look for opportunities in universities, like whether it is giving you part-time employment. Then if you have scholarship and part-time employment, everything is taken care of. You don't have to find any money that for studying over there. So you need to put some effort. 
so you look you have everything see internet is with you mobile phone is with you you just go to different universities take the list of universities from one of the reputed agencies and then shortlist according to the courses and faculty ranking scholarship opportunities and part time employment and start applying you need at least one and a half years to two years for getting admission into such kind of universities good universities so you start now then you can be aware about many other things understanding the prerequisites next is actually what the prerequisites you have to understand see some entry requirements like ielts toefl like toefl is very much important in in us for entering there uh, for getting academics over there ielts is important for like you know uk and uh, other uh, various other countries so you just uh, find out what is ielts what is toefl like test of english as a foreign language or like international english uh, testing system or whatever so you just you just equip that along with your studies scholarship requirements so for getting scholarship there are certain requirements like gre country requirements etc are there so what kind of uh, requirements are there for getting scholarship that are all you can do it along with your pg studies this is what you should do right now i'm not saying that you should migrate and go over there and not that because you just explore that if you are really really uh, you know passionate about the subject you just explore all those things also you can get you are you, this in in india and kerala there are a lot of good places that you can do but still i'm saying if at all someone is interested in international academics just just this is how people uh, many a time students ask me how to start so this is the starting point these two things that you can do as a starting point importance of establishing contacts then you know what you should do is you just start writing to the faculty of those institutions find out the faculty and write to them we writing how do you write see when you write to a foreign faculty definitely they will reply to you it is not like you know indian faculty like me or someone like you know when, when you write and i may not reply see i'm 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 joking indian faculty also reply to you but you have to show you are worth in your mail you are first of all you are contacting a person so you just in your email you just say that i have this this skills i'm really interested in this area that i wanted to work because in my pg course one of my teachers actually taught in this area they i am really interested i wanted to pursue this this things i have this 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 kind of skills how i can pursue this along with you or something like that why i am saying this importance because when you contact such people they may give you scholarship right away like that many people go they may give you scholarship right away if they feel that you are really good if you can interpret uh, they feel that you know they it is useful for them to 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 to, to actually what continue a project or something they will definitely grant you scholarship and they will take you so that is why you just write to them with good content not like you are writing like you know sir please take me over there i wanted to go to us so you please give me some scholarship and going there nobody is interested and they won't even reply to you you have to show your worth and initial establishment has to be in the form of academic conversation and then you know you establish contact and then they may give you reference to you even if they are not taking they may give you reference to you that reference will be useful for you to get admission in various universities including india in good universities and all they ask good references so that you keep it in mind okay prepare two years in advance if you want to study abroad look at these websites there are a lot of websites are there you can see like international student website these are all official websites like education future edu pass usif United States, India Education Foundation is there. Ford Foundation, International. These are the website actually telling you about various scholarship opportunities available in the world. So you can you can understand what kind of scholarship they are giving, what kind of uh, skills you need. So then, along with your PG studies, you can acquire that skills, and then you can apply for scholarship by the end of your PG program. Okay. So the, you look at these websites. International scholarship like examples are there, like Fulbright scholarship. it's a, this is a scholarship like you know you get and then you won't even pay a single rupee from your pocket everything they'll pay and also they'll get you will get a monthly grant from there uh, you can you can be you can in us for long whatever time you want depending upon the type of scholarship that you get ford foundation gates foundation hubbard humbrey fellowships are there westminster international fellowships commonwealth scholarship adp japan sponsored program why i say these scholarships and all see in this industry 4.0 when you are connected to foreign universities and foreign you know, scholars and all your skills will get upgraded automatically so that diffusion happens so that will take you to long way long way so that that actually you try you should try that 
scholarships and you know getting the scholarship itself is for example fulbright it's a title that you get lifelong you can use you are known as a fulbright or ford scholar a gates scholar it's known as gates scholar or hubert humphrey's scholar it's known as known like that or commonwealth scholar throughout your life you will known like that or like you can you can you can look for projects projects that they will fund you they will give you scholarship through projects and then if you have required skill they will give you so like you know i am of world bank wto un scholarships are there huge number of scholarships they give okay so these are the scholarships that you can look and then you can you can try abroad for studies international career is there if you are looking for international career teaching positions are there research positions are there various agencies i am of ibrd unadb all these places uh, tremendous number of economists or economic as trained personnel are required so you can look for that multinational companies and ngos indian embassies and high commissions they recruit people with economics background for their you know you know right now this international diplomacy is all about international economics so you need to know all these things they need such kind of people so for assisting them and specialized agencies internationally like food and agriculture organization national bureau of economic research Massachusetts Institute of Technology, London School of Economics, Harvard University, and you know these universities, European Central Bank, Asian Development Bank, Federal Reserve Board, Toulouse School of Economics, Center for uh, Economic Policy Research, everywhere that we can get job or career, we can get research associate internships. So all these places you can look, and you just see this uh, this website. You can go and you can get all the details about various. agency specialist agencies you can make economic scale okay private sector also there are international private agencies very very reputed agency like carnegie mellon brookings institution rand you would have heard all these cato uh, pearson institute economic policy institute hoover atlantic council world watch claremont heritage foundation all these institution private institutions are where they give huge amount of scholarships you know research associates internships you can try and then see that whether it matches with your schedule your program then you can definitely try huge opportunities in startups startups also there are a lot of opportunities and economics is uh, so one of the good subject that you know economic students you are actually at a very very good advantage situation that you can do you can start a lot of startups like you know in the startups you know various latest uh you know uh, skills like business analytics insurance analytics stock analytics consumer behavior analytics climate analytics transport analytics supply chain analytics these are the emerging area in the data analytics is the technology i told you in the beginning one of the technologies but here economics students particularly have can have this business analytics you can start your own startups in this areas like this is see insurance analytics is a poor area in india no one is there to tell you that what kind of insurance is good for you according to you that is one example i am telling you according to your situation your family situation your career someone has to tell you that this kind of insurance program is good or like you know there is no proper agencies are telling you that this kind of stock that you can take stock analysis is there like various agencies like you know gog and other agencies are there they are doing stock analytics but individually according specifically about your requirements according to your requirements if someone is telling you that you can invest in such stocks or mutual funds and or coin combination of these stocks and mutual funds and in you know, a bank and something like that then you can gain a lot of money it's a good advice to the some investor some individuals some household so such kind of things so climate analytics consumer behavior analytics these are all very very important in this industry 4.0 so you can actually try 5g technology is coming it's already announced in the country from october 12th onwards it is going to go in india so then again this boosting of these sectors will be much much higher so all these areas actually it is going to have more uh, more and more opportunity so let me conclude my lecture and by saying this thing develop your analytical skills theoretical analysis uh, like you know i told you the example like covid economic crisis global financial crisis so these are examples i am telling you so you need to actually have some kind of analytical thinking outside your academics so you are learning theories concepts everything it is good but that theories and concepts is needed for for analysis so you develop that analytical skills that will actually uh, you know help you to get a good career in this industry 4.0
Indian economy analysis is very important. So you know, Indian economy is going to be the one of the premier economies of the world. Already, you know, that India is the third largest economy in terms of purchasing power parity. Uh, also, definitely, Indian economy and the next centuries, uh, you know, it's it's going to be Indian economy. All these things actually be here. So definitely, by 2050, India is going to be in a very very big position. Even if you look at the market capitalization, the stock market, or if you look at the base of growth of you know national income, or if you look at the you know startups are developing in the country and or the trade that we are actually developing, the opportunities, investment opportunities that we have internationally. So definitely, Indian economy is going to be the one of the key economies of the world. Already it is, but still it is going to grow further. So you have to have the skills of analyzing the Indian economy, different kinds of you know uh, abstraction about you know the various issues happening in the economy then you know you can actually uh, you know build a good career parallel approach in academic academics is not good see someone will say that you know i'm very good in micro macroeconomics someone else will say that i'm very good in international trade and all it is not now it won't affect you much in this modern like industry 4.0 time so you need a need you need to know all these for solving real life problems of the economy and the country so then only actually you can act contribute to the economy or industry 4.0. So industry 4.0 is, is generating huge opportunities, but you need to have that kind of skills and approach. Then only that you can grab maximum from that kind of growing by developing because of in industry 4.0. So why Kerala students fail in national examination? Because of this parallel approach. So we know when someone asks about, you know, describe about, you know, this, uh, uh, you know, what, ISLM model or describe about the Keynesian approach of employment or whatever, we are very good and we explain everything. But when in national exams, they ask about what, how this ISLM model can be used, they would ask ISLM model. They may ask that Trust Bank of India is finding very uh, struggling very hard to introduce monetary policy in the economy because of various reasons, post COVID situation or not. What do you think that the situation of Trust Bank of India? We may write in general, like you know, some general general knowledge kind of thing in, in exam, but you won't get marks. You need to use economic language and economic theories to answer that question. That's why, because of this parallel approach only, we are actually not getting much. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I am not saying that 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 means a lot of students are not getting. So they are all getting. Kerala students are getting into that because they are changing this attitude to the, you know the, the combined approach. So that you will need to learn. Reading makes difference. Difference between you know you are your reading actually makes difference. So please read latest books, latest textbooks in economics or latest books of economics which is coming, and all this other old books also you need to learn. Nowadays students won't read uh, much of the books; they just read only the relevant portions that they they, they study. So you try to read a uh, general uh, books. And there is a whole lot of difference between information and knowledge. You may get a lot of information from the class from somewhere, but it is your duty to convert into knowledge. So that knowledge is actually the capital for you. So that knowledge is capital, not information. Information is, is exploding because of this technology industry 4.0. Information is exploding in the world. But that exploration of information itself is a problem also. The students are not, not known which are the informations is good for them what how we can convert this information to knowledge this kind of skills you need unless and until you make you convert information to knowledge you can't use it as capital for your gains from the economy so that also you keep it in mind okay your strength matters quality not quantity again i'm telling you produce according to market and not market according to produce this is a catch word right now industry 4.0 produce according to market not market according to produce because you are you you may think that I have these these things I have to fit in with market situation that may not be may not happen so oh, try to change yourself I'm not saying that you know you have to change completely try to get your skills according to the market skills uh, learn that skills and then you can gain a good career try to sell what market needs and don't try to sell what we have okay so you may have some quality. We are always trying that selling that quality, that kind of uh, you know uh, skill. But instead, what market needs, what economy needs, what industry 4.0 needs, that you just understand and try to sell accordingly. Then you can get good career in your in your in your life. 
so focus is very important right kind of information with right kind of inputs at right time with right attitude will fetch you maximum in this industry 4.4 so uh, many a time one of these things like you know we always say in microeconomics class like what is demand demand is actually desire backed by ability willingness to pay see all these three four things has to come together then only demand happens similarly when you want to gain maximum from industry 4.0 you need a right kind of information right kind of inputs you need you need right time that information then only actually what with right attitude then you can actually gain maximum from this industry 4.0 so that you keep it in mind so don't compare your life with others there is no comparison between the sun and moon and this they shine when when it's that time that is what abj our founding chancellor used to do, say this you know you, you you need not compare with other people how they are doing according to your strength your weaknesses you are, you just change your skills you try to actually gain more you just go forward don't wait for anyone then you can gain maximum so look at the sky we are not alone the whole universe is friendly to us and conspires only to give the best to those who dream and work again abj abdul kalam so thank you for this opportunity all the very best